So what I think we need to do now is to start to show uh, how the bulldog works in this very relaxed way against uh, something that would be non-compliant. Now in the concept of bulldog there's, there's many things to look at to condense down. One of the things is, is, is timing. So that as, as, as different attacks are coming to me I'm going to do different things. So in this scenario if, if Christopher comes to me with a, an attack I'm looking to try and either block that get out the way of it, if this could be a sword or a stick or whatever, certainly I don't want to get hurt. So I look at my walk and everything's in the walk, so I'm thinking of where do I walk to that's safe. So the biggest thing I'm doing is walking to a safe place, whereas what Chris was trying to do is, is to, to, to attack me in some way that would injure me. So if I walk at the right time, I'm in a safe place. When I get there, I'm also in a very relaxed place because I've simply walked with the poise of the body. So now I can go to various places on his body that are joints and start to disassemble his stability with my movements which are at this moment in time very slow just to show the potency of them and now you can follow all the way through so that's my crawl and my movements just come back up again Chris and attack again. If I go here, then I get his joint. My elbow is now working, but my elbow is working from my pelvis, from my foot. So if I try to push Christopher with just my elbow, I can meet resistance because he can meet resistance, he can feel it. If I send what's called a dissonant signal through his skin, dissonant being that it upsets what he normally thinks, but it's congruent with the body and therefore it doesn't upset his balance and give him an alarm signal, so he tends to follow the signal and it's, it's done very, very softly and gently. So my movement is very soft and gentle until he ends up in a position that he doesn't want to be in. So as you can see, I can make him go to all kinds of positions and roll around that axis without any effort from me by simply being in the right place at the right time. Another concept, uh, you could use that again. Another concept inside of this is that we're going to use cohesion of skin. Cohesion of the skin suggests that if we've got proprioception, which is global, then any one part talks to all parts. That's tensegris. So if you place a signal into one part of the body, the rest knows exactly how to respond to that signal. So as long as that crosses the interface, his nervous system doesn't use this as an alarm. And again, just moves in keeping with the way I want to move. So I can take his body with cohesion and not even use my arms and make his whole body move into a place that he doesn't want to without use of the hands because of this cohesion. So another use of the cohesion, if, if I was a little old man and he was to attack me in the street and say, give me that big wallet now, and I go, well, I'll put my walking stick on here and I'll cohese and I'll, I'll roll pastry. So I'm slightly stepping back to make this movement all of one, so I'll roll pastry and he ends up in this kind of a movement. So what I've got to do is the stick has to be light. If I try to press with the stick, it immediately gets an alarm response and it can respond against it. So it, it has to work in such a way that it, it's very light and cohesive until I get it to where I want. If this was a feudal setting, then of course I can now pull out my weapon and kill him and he still can't get away because he's stuck to me. You understand? So I can do anything I want. I can cut him in various places and he can't escape. It, can you? Can you get your hands off? It just won't come off. And then when it disassembles, I'm using them for stability. <laughs> he's, he's using those for stability. Okay. Again, if Christopher came to me and did something like a strangle, I've got various options that I can do. Now, one one of the techniques, that, if it were to be shown as a technique, would be to take the arm up in a spiral manner. So you can see, if I want extension of the body, which is this way, then if I look up from this occipital anterior joint here that changes the poise mechanism and switches on the extensors of the body. So I get this, this for free. If however I want to pull Christopher this way, then I want the flexors to switch on. So I drop my head downwards and I pull this way. And I get flexion of the whole body, one muscle working as a totally integrated whole. Whereas if I try to pull with an arm, I'd get, I get this, <coughs> which doesn't work. So that doesn't work at all. However, if I tip my head and, and stay relaxed and get cohesion, I get this which is a totally different concept altogether. So we get that, we get that movement. So you can see that that's coming through the spine, from the spine, 
and using different parts of the body. The other thing is to look at the way people are assembled. This joint here, if we were a quadruped, we would be using our legs here on the sacroiliac joint, that's the, this joint at the back of the base of the spine, that we walk from, and we also will be using this joint here, the sternoclavicular junction. But as bipedal upright, we tend not to use that very much, so we're not very effective there. But it's evidence that we need it, because if we have someone that's quite stable, and they're pointing all their energies down to the floor, and they can use the floor for stability, they can use their arm strength for stability, and I take this joint away from him, then it destabilizes his whole nervous system. Now this is effortless. And that gives me this hand, which he can hold as hard as he wants. So he can hold this, and I go, Rup, and this just comes off. But not only does it come off, it's, once it's off, it's no longer any of any use to him because he's integrated through the whole movement. So I can make him move then from that one action. So you can see that I could do this in free space, but you wouldn't appreciate what it's doing. Whereas if I'm doing it against the body, if you can see, whoops, you can see what it is doing. So again, uh, can I throw? Um, if I take Christopher down and throw him, then I follow him. So I've got one arm trapped here, I've got the other arm trapped here, I've the ability to break his ribs, the ability to move, the ability to turn over and control at all times through the movement and walk away. So the body's going to follow the head and once you understand that then having the head free is, is an important aspect. But the biggest thing we've got with, is, is the spine and this, this lumbar lordosis. If you just hold that lumbar lordosis there, we've got three curves in the spine here. So if I want to generate uh, some movement, I've got different choices. As I turn my thorax, it torsions my pelvis, which gives me a pendulous step, but also gives me a propulsive push. So at that point, if I step back, that just elongates that all the way back to the back toe and to this, this finger here. So I've got a spiral going right from here all the way to that back toe. Now, if you can see, if you watch slowly, you'll see it spiral. So I'm just under the collarbone here, and if I step back, and tear down the spine now, I'm rotating the pelvis on it, I've got the pendula, so now I'm monopedal. And one of the things that babies do is, as the, soon as they learn to be bipedal, they learn to be monopedal. And biotentegrity fits with monopedal because it still works exactly the same on one foot. Everything works the same. You don't need two feet, which takes away the, the pedestrian model of, of one leg being the propellant of the other. What about when you're in one leg? You're only using one leg at a time. Those forces still have to generate through. So as you tear down the spine, you then produce those uh, vectors of power. And you were also mentioned earlier about facial and the skin. So when we looked earlier, we've got this cohesion of skin. So if you take skin and you move, you move it with cohesion, then you've crossed the interface of the body, which is the skin. So if I'm tension coupled through Dave's interface, which is the skin, we now work as one harmonious unit. His nervous system has no reason to say that's abnormal because the signal is congruent with what he gets from his own nervous system. If we make that act like a second skin, then it'll also come with cohesion in the direction of the movement. Now if I pull him and try to use my bicep, what I get is immediate strain, counter strain, I'm pulling there and he's just stopping me at the shoulder. Dave's not stopping me, his tissue is stopping me before, before he even thinks about stopping. Does that make sense? So I pull and I get, I get a resistance. If, however, I only use this kind of flexion, he just moves towards because it's the right kind of congruent signal. So that way you can use cloth uh, as, as a... 